Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of State of Survival with Sticky Fang Gaming. And this is part two of my State vs. State series. Uh, if you haven't checked out part one yet, I highly recommend you go into my most recent uploads. Click on part one and go ahead and give it a watch. Uh, to give you a little basic rundown of what was happening, uh, it went over the beginning of uh, State vs. State, the one hour you get before your capital opens. State 92 came over to State 11, started to port into different areas around the uh, around the capital. And uh, I was trying to speed port some guys out. I lost a lot of power. And then the, the capital opened up. And uh, St State 11 Legion, we took the north and the west towers. And GLC, our number one alliance here in State 11, took the south, the east, and the capital. Um, so yeah, a lot of action was happening, but this one is going to have even more. Um, this is where things get crazy. So, uh, stick with me. This is going to be a long video. I slowed a lot of the footage down because uh, some people were saying that it was too quick in part one. So I slowed it down. I'll go over it in more, I go over it in uh, more detail and I hope that you guys enjoy like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for part three as well. So let's get started. So to start with this video, I'm on the West Tower and I'm a couple seconds away from just taking the rally. Um, so the rally is going to hit while I'm trying to look at a whole different state. Uh, you can see how involved I was with that. Um, so I'm looking at State 26 just because I'm curious about how their uh, SPS is going. I think a lot of people were messaging me asking me to check out um, the different state versus states and i know 26 was facing 35 the the top guys in the game so i was super curious about that uh, which is why i'm like just scrolling around in there but uh, i did just get hit on the west tower i won the rally however i did lose two million power uh straight heals i believe so i was able to heal that later but yeah uh talking to glc uh coordinating with them because they are our um, teammates, you know, uh, in State 11, the main two alliances are, are GLC and Legion. A lot of our other alliances have pretty much died out. So super unfortunate for us. Um, we basically were on our own. Now, keep in mind that we are facing State 92, which is a much younger state, and they have a crap ton of alliances. And I actually wrote it down from uh, a message I got from one of their members of who was all involved. So they had PND, AUD, SLC, HIH, and RTV. So that's five alliances. And they also had a couple other smaller guys just playing interference. So I think in total, uh, we were counting about eight different alliances from State 92 at one point. And yeah, it literally was just S11 Legion and then GLC. So we really had our hands full. It was uh, pretty insane. Like you just saw there, uh, WWW. We were also fighting those guys as well. As most of you know, who have the opportunity to play state versus state, and those of you who will get the eventual opportunity to play state versus state, uh, you will probably realize really quickly how much healing is a big thing. So uh, something that I did, because I was the governor before the event started, I popped a 50% healing boost from uh for as like the governor, like maybe 30 minutes before the event started. So that gave us uh, within the state a 50% healing boost, which really helped out. And we were also doing hyper healing. So if you don't know, hyper healing is where you heal small increments of troops and you get people to click the heal button. Uh, so it gets done quicker. Super convenient. It helps out a lot. And um, it's like one of the key strategies to play in this game. So as you see, uh, we're still in the East Tower or the West Tower here. Uh, Nimki isn't on as of yet. He he had something he was taking care of, so he wasn't able to hop on quite yet. Uh, but Cat Meme God was holding the North Tower. Um, he was a pretty strong player. Uh, I could beat him, um, but because I was holding the West, every time I pulled from the West Tower, HIH and, and um, Harley Quinn, she would knock out the rest of my guys. Uh, but shout out to G.I. Joe, Flash. Meathead, um, they were really holding it down. Demo, uh, doing the best that they can. Mario, um, all great guys. Really appreciate everything that they did. Um, so RTV and Cat Meme God are holding the North Tower, kind of really being a pain in the ass, honestly. 
they they were really like yeah um so uh glc is rallying them and as you see kuzo just knocked them out thankfully because they were being a hindrance and those tower hits really do hurt after a while guys especially when they're hitting every one minute or so you lose a lot of troops so glc was able to knock them out um the top guys for glc is kuzo uh pyramus uh silent friend uh Atarax, beer and there's a couple other uh, sorry if I missed you, but those are all their top guys. I'm soloing this RTV character right here um, on the right of the screen. Soloing him out. And again, I'm just really just losing infantry at this point. So that took uh, not too much. It was a rally, so I didn't lose too much personally. But still, I shouldn't have been rallying these guys. Uh, please don't do what I'm doing right now. This was a noob move. I don't know what was wrong with me. I knocked him out, and it was an easy win, but still, it's not... Uh, the losses on his side were pretty heavy, but it wasn't worth it. Another guy just ports right into place, and they're still going to be a pain in the ass anyway, so... Um, yeah, you can see there's a lot of invaders. There's way more invaders than there are just organic people who are from State 11. Um, so, yep, I talk a lot of crap in uh, State Chat. Um, the sticky thing you guys get on YouTube and the sticky thing that you guys see in state chat during state versus state, there can be two different guys. I talk a lot of trash, uh, just for fun, not because I'm a genuinely like mean person. I'm typically pretty nice, but, uh, it's a game, you know, and I feel like it brings like another level of, you know, intensity. It gets people riled up and I like that. So yeah, I talk a lot of crap. I'm going to um, cut some of this out though, because, you guys aren't here to just see me text and chat for a minute of this video. So uh, I'm, you're going to see me going to skip skip ahead here in a second. Okay. All right. So uh, Nimki's back. He took care of whatever he needed to take care of in real life. He is setting rallies. I am defending the West Tower right now. And I'm still feeling pretty good. They haven't been able to do a whole lot of damage to us so far. They're big heavy hitters. Haven't really come out the woodwork as of yet, which we didn't know of. Um, they have some pretty strong three stars, but they also have some really strong two stars. Uh, Panda. Panda, Panda. Uh, Panda is one of their top guys. And yeah, I, I, I talked some trash to Panda. And I just want to say, Panda, you really proved yourself. He's going to change his name to Panda Kick and Sticky. And he really did it. He kicked my ass. So shout out to you. I don't know if you guys just heard that. That was thunder. But let's talk strategy really quick. So our strategy changed in the middle of state versus state. And I'll go over that when that comes. But uh, at the very beginning, the the tasks were simple. Uh, Nimki and myself will hold two towers, the west and the north. GLC would hold the south and the east along with the capital and that's that was our game plan of winning. We didn't know what kind of stats these guys had. We were hoping that they didn't have anyone uh, too strong, uh, which they did. And we were hoping that it was going to be pretty easy and that was going to be that. That was not the case. That did not end up happening. And that's why I'm able to talk to you about our strategy today because we won't be using the same strategy next time. Uh, so you can use our old one. It did not work. Uh, what you guys will need to end up doing is teamwork as one cohesive unit, depending on what, uh, how big your state is and how many active players you guys have. Now, I'll talk about State 92 strategy a little bit. They came in guns blazing. They didn't really know exactly uh, who was going to do what or anything like that. It really felt like they were kind of a hodgepodge of just a bunch of different strong guys and just going crazy against us because they didn't really know what to expect, just like we didn't. Uh, I'm not trying to rag on 92 or, or anything like that. That is just how I saw it um, when I was playing with them. If they were a little bit more organized, I think they would have beaten us pretty easily, um, pretty solidly. But uh, P&D had their own game plan, and they have some really strong guys who like were able to support them and back them up in that standard. AUD kind of was doing their own thing. And as you'll see um, here, like in a few minutes, 
SLC was even hitting the other alliances from State 92. They were hitting them from the towers, and they were making our jobs that much easier. We didn't have any alliances in State 11 that were fighting against us besides, like, one little rogue alliance that we can deal with. But SLC has guys with pretty good stats that were hitting other guys in State 92 with really good stats doing our job for us. And uh, sorry if I'm taking away from the action here on the screen, but I just want to kind of give you more narrative of what exactly is going on and what happened uh, during this fight. Uh, so, yeah, you have to be organized for these types of events, guys. You need to talk about it the entire week prior to these events happening and come up with a game plan. If 92 would have came up with a game plan with all the different alliances that they have fighting us, even if we're just talking about the major alliances of PND, AUD, SLC, HIH, RTV, if each of those alliances took one tower and then one of those alliances took the capital, there's nothing that we could have done as State 11. There's absolutely nothing that we could have done. If each of their big guys, because they had five really, really strong guys that we were having uh, troubles against, all took a building and sat on it, there is no way in the world that we would have came back to beat them. It would have been an eight-hour event. We would have had a ton of losses on our, on our side trying to knock them out of different towers and stuff. And they would have been about their merry way with the win. But that's not the case because... They were unorganized. They were fighting each other. They weren't working together. They had like two or three of their big guys in just one of the alliances, you know, instead of spreading them around or even consolidating the troops. Because I think at the very end of this thing, which was which is going to be in part three, they were running low on troops. I mean, we were too, but there's no way that they should have been running low on troops with how many people were involved with their event. We had so much, so much less people than they did, and we were still pushing on and fighting. But uh, let's get back to the action on the screen here. I think I've uh, kind of explained things and ranted long enough. So uh, while I was ranting, P and D Panda, uh, Panda Kick and Sticky actually took the capital, and so now we're coming up with a plan with GLC to see if we can take it back. Um, unfortunately, Pyramus. He's not able to take it back because the stats are so similar, but uh, Panda has a couple other uh, stats uh, higher than him just from medals. So um, make sure you guys are upgrading those medals because they do make a, a difference in power uh, sometimes, especially in this case. So we're trying to figure out if Nimki can rally him out of the capital and then GLC can come in and kind of take it back because uh, our agreement was with GLC – they would win the capital no matter what because it's their turn. But if they're not able to knock the guy out, it's kind of crazy for it to be like, okay, we rally them out with Nimki because he has high stats. And then GLC comes to rush their troops back in. And then GLC gets rallied and gets knocked out. And then we here in S11 Legion have to knock the enemies back out and GLC rushes back in again. That would have been too much... Uh, and kind of dumb and a waste of time too. So uh, eventually we do come up with a different plan, but this, that's what we're about to start right now. Just knocking them out and just trying to help the best we can. So after we get the go ahead from GLC that we can start hitting the capital, uh, I scout it. I show the scout report into our Alliance chat and Nimki's gonna set the rally, right? Uh, we're taking rallies from the REM Alliance um, from State 92 who is trying to help their guys out. They don't do a whole lot of damage, but again, um, any troop wounded is another troop that's helping them, so that kind of sucks in our end. This looks a little hectic, and it is, but this is still a lot of fun for us. I'm having a great time. We haven't had competition like this in a long time. Some of their bigger guys are starting to wake up a little bit. Um, Steffi from HIH, uh, Harley Quinn is already in the action, Bamba from PND, and Joven from AUD. They're all starting to get into the action a little bit, and they're just laying waste to a lot of the guys from GLC. Uh, we over at Legion, we're doing pretty okay so far. We've been able to stay out of their way, uh, mostly because of Nimki. But yeah, uh, we're we're really we're starting to sweat a little bit. Uh, at first, we're kind of we're just taking our time. We think we have this in the bag, but these guys are really starting to show us that they are coming to play. Uh, unknowingly to us. 
we're about to get a little bit of help from one of the alliances in 92. Not that I think they did it on purpose, but SLC is currently rallying the East Tower that P&D occupies. And they're not going to cancel the rally. And again, I was saying before, SLC has some pretty chunky guys. They're going to knock out P&D from the East Tower. And that doesn't really help us in the fact that um, the tower is still not going to shoot in the capital because they're both from 92. But like I said before, Indy Wounded Troop helps out the other team. So they basically just wounded themselves. And this is where it comes, that whole not working together and not being on the same page comes in comes into play. As you can see on the screen, I'm having uh, constant communication with GLC. You know, me and Pyram is going back and forth, um, seeing what we what we need Nimki to do and whatnot. Um, and, you know, just being, just having that open communication, which is something they don't have. They're actually going to communicate through state chat of all things, which kind of tells us in 11 that these 92 guys are definitely not on the same page. And that's okay because we, we are buckled up and we are ready to go for the long call in 11. If this takes the complete 24 hours for the event, we were ready for it. We didn't want it to, and as you'll see in the later uh, portions of the videos, it did wear us down because it was constant fighting the entire, what, 20-something hours we fought, but we we were ready to go the distance. We had that mentality that we were not going to come out of this with a loss. So right now, I have 35 million points in the event. I'm trying to, to beat Keen and Kuzo, who actually had the chance to go over to the other state and fight uh, in that hour that I was kind of hanging out around the capital. And, but yeah, I'm, I'm slowly catching up. And now you see uh, in state chat, we're like kind of trolling the 92 players because SLC just took their tower, really just doing our job for us, saving us troops, saving us time. And we're all just rooting them on, just giving them a really hard time. And so uh, that's going to be the end for this clip. However, uh, this next clip that's about to pop up on the screen here. Um, is not too far into the future, but the uh, tone is definitely changed. So this is the next clip, and let me kind of tell you what's going on right now, okay? So we're still rallying, folks. We're still uh, knocking down troops and stuff, but uh, the big guys woke up. So those names that I mentioned earlier, the Joven, uh, Bamba, Steffi, and then you have Panda. There's a, a Sibid guy, Sidid, C... There's a guy or in, in State 92, he has a Dallas Cowboys picture for his uh, account. I can't think of your name, sorry bro, shout out to you. Um, they all wake up and they're going to start just uh, laying waste to us and to our troops. Uh, SLC holds the East Tower right now, we're going to try to knock them out. GLC is going to try to knock them out and stuff. But Panda still holds the capital, um, which is the biggest issue for us right now because they're just gaining time. They're just gaining time right now. And um, at one point, State 92 actually had three hours and 15 minutes on their counter uh, more than we did. So we had to come back a, a total of three hours and 15 minutes. I believe they had like four hours, four hour, four and a half hours. And we had like, I don't know, uh, maybe my math is off. But yeah, they were up by a couple hours and we had to come back and grind and it was rough. Yeah, this video is almost 19 minutes long, and for those of you who are still watching, I greatly appreciate you. Uh, this, this doesn't even feel like I'm fully encompassing like all the action that took place during this event. Like these are just little snippets. I know the capital says is 7:33 again. It gets reset a lot, so you can't really tell how what hour it is based off of what the capital says. I believe this is hour two or three, maybe four or five into the event. And we're just still going back and forth and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I think at the end of this entire event, I had like eight hours or so of footage. And the event lasted 20 hours or so. My phone died a bunch of different times. And I'm going to go ahead and speed up uh, the next couple minutes of footage. That way we can get through this. I'm going to just talk at the very end about what happened that I didn't capture on video because... It either happened through Discord or it was just things that I didn't want you guys to see for um, strategy reasons. Uh, so I called a scout bomb to the Capitol because our state isn't super active. We had like 
nine people scout bombing and it was pretty pathetic which is okay um and state 92 basically laughed at us and was like if you want to see a real scout bomb that's going to burn your phone come to state 92 and i i believe that full full heartedly so if you're going to use the scout bomb tactic definitely do that when you have a lot of people because we kind of just embarrass ourselves at this point but now nimki is going to uh hit their capital and Here's the crazy thing. So uh, 92 was talking a lot of crap in state chat. But as our capital was approaching, they pulled. Like as you see in chat right now, they, they pulled from the capital, which is smart. It's smart. Don't get me wrong. However, it was extremely frustrating. And this is something that is going to frustrate us for the next however many more hours we have for this event. These guys, uh, sometimes they would not take a hit at the very, like around the middle portion. And then at the very end, they were taking hits just because we had to go back and forth to get every second we could get with the capital fight. But right now they were saving troops. They have a ton of troops to use, but they were, they were saving them. So they left the capital. We took it with no action, unfortunately. Sorry about that, guys. But we did get the capital from them. And what end up what ends up happening is we pull, GLC will take it, and then that goes into uh, this next clip and the last clip for this part two, and um we're gonna talk a little bit more at the end of that last clip. Uh, GLC Adirax is gonna take it. Um, there's going to be an AUD member uh, Martinez who's gonna hit me out of the North Tower, or who's gonna take the North Tower, and I can't get it back from them because they're really strong and I don't know if it's because of that person who's in the rally or whoever is reinforcing them um, but they'll take that but we will have the south tower and GLC will have the east that's for sure and the capital so like I mentioned AU, the north tower is clear AUD is going to take it and to talk about what I didn't capture um, so we were having a hard time getting the capital um P and D ended up taking it again. Panda did, and then um some of the other guys I mentioned before, like Devin, Jovan, the guy with the Dallas Cowboys logo was his picture. They all started to get involved, and we didn't have enough troops in Legion to keep rallying these guys um and helping out GLC. And GLC obviously was having a hard time as well because they couldn't take any rallies from these guys, and it was taking a lot of uh effort from them to go back and forth with them they were doing hyper healing and stuff and it was helping them but they just didn't have the support they needed so um we hopped off the game for a little while and we had a conference call on discord and during this conference call on discord it was all the leaders of legion and all the leaders of uh, glc and um we just kind of talked about what should we do to ensure that we beat these guys it doesn't matter who we had in the capital. It only mattered that uh, State 11 as a whole won because we have been waiting for this for months, really for almost a year, if not a year. And to lose our first state warfare would have been an embarrassment. It would have probably taken out uh, all the energy we had left to play this game. I feel like it was our last hoorah. This was going to make or break whether people stayed or quit the game uh, for our state, even though it's already pretty dead. So we wanted to give it our everything. So we decided that Legion would break up into the most active players and the players with the most resources left, the troop speed ups, um, activeness, you know, not going to bed anytime soon. And we would join GLC. So that's what we did. We um we did that, we broke up, we joined into GLC, and starting in part three, what you'll see is it was a few hours in and we were still having a difficult time, but we were able to uh, slowly combat those guys who are just so strong. Again, we only had Nimki. That, we only had him. He's the only person who could take rallies from these guys, who could knock them out of the capital and stuff. Um, Fran and Adarax and Pyramus, they were able to knock out some of these guys with uh, double or triple rallies, but we weren't able to do it um, just with one single rally. So that means we were going through more troops more quickly. And so, yeah, that was our plan. We came up with the game plan that, okay, when P&D has the capital, Nimki is going to rally the capital, even if we don't have any of the towers. Hopefully we can get one, two, three, or all the towers. But if we, even if we don't have any towers... 
We're going to knock PND out of the Capitol. We're going to sit there as long as we can, take a couple tower hits, and just hyper heal, hyper heal, hyper heal. We're healing 1,000 troops at a time, 1,500 troops at a time, 2,000 troops at a time, and we're all just spamming the help button to heal these troops as quickly as we can and stuff. So we're going through a crap ton of resources, um, and we're going to keep reinforcing as much as we can. Now, when State 92 started catching on to this, um, and they knew that Nimki was strong, they would begin to double rally him. So they would send um, uh, Panda, Kick and Panda, and Damon, or uh, Bumba, sorry, Bumba, and those two guys would rally against Nimki, and they would hit about five to, to ten seconds apart, so not enough time for us to get reinforcements in, and they would knock Nimki out, and then PND would sit on the Capitol again. And so they had about three out like again, they had like three hours on us. We had to catch up to them because we did the conference call and we just had a uh, a lot of time lost just figuring out what we we're gonna do. And so we played the game of attrition. And I, I don't want to get too too much into detail, but that's basically um what happened and we're gonna talk more about it in uh, part three. And part three is going to be the ending. We'll go over what we learned, what they learned. Um, and yeah, so if you like this video, I hope you do. If you're still watching, you're awesome. I appreciate you. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, part three will come in the next day or so. And yeah, you guys are super awesome. I only do this for you. This isn't really, I mean, it benefits me, but at the same time, it doesn't. So this is all for you guys. I really hope you appreciate it. And stay tuned for more here at Seder Survival with Sticky Fan Gaming.